RHPs since the sixth grade, which means I've sat in this morning meeting and heard over 289 senior speeches. It's a lot, I know. Yet I really only remember about six of them. I mean, don't get me wrong, each speech was personal and gave advice. The six I remember just really stuck with me. I remember Adam Rice's speech about a sneeze and the meaning behind saying, God bless you. Mitchell Turner's speech about how he had a necklace that said, live, laugh, love, and how he lived his days by those three words. I remember Daniel Sumi, who discussed the importance of procrastination and vegging, and David Shostead, who wrote about breakfast. <laughs> My point is, I was so determined to write a speech that people would remember that when it was time for them to write their speeches, they would look back and think of mine. But then I remembered something. People have, on average, an attention span of about 12 seconds and a tendency to zone out when more numbers are being presented, which means at this point in my speech, over half of you are already thinking about the next class you have. So therefore, I decided I was just gonna tell a story. I thought someone would have written about our outdoor ed experiences here. Yes, I know Hannah briefly talked about the bonding moment we had one night, but my speech focuses on a few days before that. So let me take you back to about a month ago. Imagine a two-person yellow kayak. Unknowing of the terror in front of us, Miss Rubin and Mr. Brahma's advisory set sail on these boats on the journey of a lifetime. It was said that we would be caving, an experience I thought that would be enjoyable. But once it was about 30 minutes in and we had already gone through three small caves and the naturalist told us we were going to paddle to lunch, I grew concerned. Mostly due to the fact that it was only about 10 to 10.30 at this point. How could we already be ready for lunch? But I can always eat, I thought to myself. It was about 40 minutes in at this point and the pain started to kick in. I wouldn't consider myself a very active person. I mean, I do get my visual, occasional gym visits. But other than that, the most workout my upper arms get is when I have to reach for food on the top shelves of my fridge. In other words, my arms grew sore and my butt became numb. I asked Gabby, my kayak partner, how much further she thought it would be, and she shrugged her shoulders and said it was a three mile trip. Three miles wasn't bad, I thought to myself. I used to run that every day. We were definitely almost there. Are you in as much pain as I am, I yelled up to her. Oh, so much, she replied. It was comforting to know that we were on the same page, but at the same time, a little scary considering we were slowing down. We then paddled over to Paco, the naturalist leading the kayak group, and asked him how much further it was. He laughed and smiled and said that we were still over two miles away. Gabby and I turned to each other and bursted out laughing, thinking it was a joke. However, when we turned back and saw the look on Paco's face, we soon realized he wasn't exaggerating. We continued paddling and soon the wind started to pick up, pushing up back against us. Don't stop paddling, I screamed at Gabby, who had stopped moving. But I'm tired, she yelled back to me. The wind blew harder. Gabby, paddle harder, we're going backwards, I yelled at her. We paddled on. I closed my eyes and prayed that we would pray prayed that we would make it to shore. I didn't care at this point where we ended up as long as I was back on the shore, the beautiful rocky shore. The wind blew, the water splashed, our bodies froze, we paddled on. I opened my eyes and looked to the rocks on our left to see the progress we had made, but we still had not moved. The wind was so strong that our paddling attempts were not strong enough to propel us forward. This is where it all ends, we thought. We'll just let the sea take us. <laughs> we're now about two hours in, and we finally hear Paco yell something back to the rest of the group. We just passed halfway point. What did he say? I asked Gabby, praying that my ears had deceived me. We're only at the halfway point, she said in tears. We were in shock. How was it possible that we had paddled so hard and so long and we were still only a mile and a half in? I was exhausted. I was scared. I was so nauseous and I was done. We looked around us and saw that our group of about 15 boats was all so spread out. Although we were still moving backwards, we still seemed to be one of the groups ahead. The only ones near us were Isaac and Kellen and Mr. Brahma. I had to admit it was a be bit reassuring when I saw the looks on their faces and knew they were just as tired and done as we were. We paddled on like warriors, fought through the pain, and tried not to think about the fact that we still had to go back. Finally, we came across the last turn, a huge rock and a small beach. We made it. With huge smiles, we turned the corner, but our smiles quickly turned to frowns and tears as we saw that the beach was still about a quarter mile away. We paddled on, trying not to think about the fact that we still had to face the tiring paddle back. We had made it, three miles, taking three hours and 45 minutes of pain and suffering, but we had made it. It was a small beach, a rocky, tree stump filled beach that stretched about 50 feet long and 10 feet wide. In other words, its name, Potato Beach, really described the beautifulness of it. Our lunch consisted of wet tortilla wraps and potato chips, but we were all so hungry and tired that we devoured it all. But this is when things changed. Mr. Marr, who seemed to be having a much better time than most of us, <laughs> jumped in the water and started snorkeling around. We all watched him from the beach and wondered how he was in such a good mood compared to the rest of us. When he finally came out of the water, he had such a huge smile on his face and asked any of us if we wanted to go snorkeling and how amazing his experience had been. Obviously, all of us declined, but to this day, I still think back and remember this experience. 
You can always choose a way to feel. Mr. Marr was happy. He chose to stay positive and make the most out of a difficult situation. Although it was hard to stay positive, he still managed to. Looking back on this time, I'm sure Mr. Marr had a very different experience than most of us did. But now it was time. Time to face the dreaded experience back. We loaded into the boats and started. Luckily, the wind was on our side and we managed to make it back in under an hour. As we approached the docks, hope was restored, yet there was still a mile long walk back to the campsite. But all that mattered was that we made it, back on land, a lot, alive. Although this sounds really negative, the experience taught me a lot. Outdoor ed is fun though. Like Hannah's senior speech last week, I've had many great experiences and, and enjoyed all the outdoor eds I've been on. Life is hard sometimes, whether you're piled up on homework, on a long hike, or in, a situ or in our situation, stuck in a big yellow coffin. The thing is though, we made it. No matter how hard things are, you can make it and, you're gonna, and you can get through it. No matter how hopeful or lost you feel, you will make it. I'm not gonna lie, high school is hard and there are many times when you feel like you're not gonna make it, but you will. It's challenging, it's difficult, it's exhausting, but it's so worth it in the end when you get that feeling of accomplishment. Don't give up, persevere, and eventually you'll make it too, no matter what you're dealing with. There's always gonna be the Mr. Mars in the world who choose to make the most out of a situation and then there's always gonna be the people who are miserable, but that is in your control as well. Life is hard, high school is hard, friends are hard, families are hard, but you'll make it through it and it'll be so worth it. Shout outs, uh, Miss Wrestler, I wouldn't be the person that I am today without you. You were, uh, you were helping me for four years of high school and I always made sure that things would run smoothly for me no matter how difficult they may be. I appreciate you so much and for all the hard work you put in for me, thank you. Miss Hagee, you've been one of the hardest teachers I've ever had and I'm so grateful for that. You've pushed me to become a better writer, better critical thinker, a better scholar, historian, and student. Your classes are so much fun and you're always so full of life and energy. You're the kind of teacher students remember and you make learning fun. Thank you so much for everything and not ruining my summer and summer school. Miss Cassidy, I'm sorry I asked so many questions in your class and slowed down your lessons, but you have really helped me understand the concepts we are learning. I appreciate all the lunches and extra times you have put in to help me with the problems I was having. I'm sorry I gave you the study guides that are as long as novels, but I'm glad you enjoyed them. Mr. Williamson, you were the first RHP teacher I had when I was still in Renaissance, and you helped me to keep up with the RHP kids and pushed me to become a stronger writer. You taught me so many of the techniques that I still use today, and I'm forever grateful for that. Ms. Rubin, you are the nicest person I know, and you have such a big and caring heart. You put others before you, and you always listen to whatever is on my mind, and you've been there for me at my lowest point. I'm so glad that I came to your advisory, even though Holloway was awesome too. Thank you for always being there, and my bunny thanks you for his hut. <laughs> Ms. Morris, you go so underappreciated since all of your students are in middle school, but you've done so much for me and have looked after me for the seven years I've been at RHP and Renaissance. I would not be the student I am today without you, and I'm so glad for how much effort you put into having Renaissance accommodate for me. Mom and Dad, thank you for sending me to the school, even though there are many times where I wish you had it. We have been through so much over the past seven years, and you've always managed to stick by my side. You both are such strong and independent people, and I hope that someday I become as happy and amazing as you guys are. I love you, and this may come to a surprise, but I may actually miss you in college next year. Thank you. <laughs>